I'm not trying to be like, oh, I manifested this, but like, I didn't not manifest it. I was a fucking nerd back then for playing tennis. When you lose, you're a fucking loser. Did you feel like, uh, like pressure to play or did you actually like love playing? It, no, it was horrible. I mean, I, I was naturally like athletic. I love to run. I love to hit shit. I was like naturally talented, but I was like anxious. Like I had constant performance anxiety. Like one day I would just like, I'd be playing like top in the nation and I would just like lose confidence in my forehand and convince myself like I can't hit a forehand. I would like lose my second serve. It was like so mental and all my anxiety would come out on the court. Like your relationship with your life, they would always say is like the relationship with the ball. Like if you're feeling insecure, it comes out. It is, they say the court, I am literally like an old man with sports references, but they say the court is six inches from ear to ear. Like at some point, everyone wow. has incredible ground strokes. Yeah. And it's really all like the slightest amount of confidence that will help someone win. But what like tennis is similar to boxing, wrestling, that one on one, like striking each other and strategy. But like when you lose, you're a fucking loser. Like yeah, it's you're so gutted, easy yeah. after basketball to be like, yeah, fucking, you know, Jeremy <laughs> yeah, couldn't hit a three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I had 25, so it's whatever. Or coach didn't put me in, no my fault. Yeah. But also tennis to go pro, you are an entrepreneur. You have to pay for all your travel. Unless you get sponsored, you have to pay for all like your coaching and your, you know, physical therapy. And then you only get paid if you win. Like imagine if the Knicks only got paid if they won. Yeah, well, I wish they never do. They'd be, they, <laughs> they would never be anywhere. They'd be out of business. <laughs> yeah, they'd be out of business. So tennis, I'm currently watching Wimbledon. It's a it's a really great sport. Um, and people, t it's now like cool. Like all the Instagram girlies are wearing yeah. their like little tennis skirts and like holding a racket. And I was like, I was a fucking nerd back then for playing tennis. Yeah, if you played tennis in the early 2000s, like <laughs> you might have got some D, but like it wasn't crazy. You know? Yeah, like. There's more yeah. soccer girls. Everyone liked the soccer girls. The tennis girls, a lot of them were like Eastern European and scary. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you carry like your clarinet to practice with the unicorn. <laughs> you always saw a girl with that fucking big ass black box walking down. I'm like, yeah, this girl fucking plays 11 instruments. I do think also the tennis girls are a ne next level of crazy. Like soccer girls, like they have friends, they have community, they pass the ball to each other. Tennis girls, I'm like, don't fuck with me. Cause it's me versus the world, right? Cause my dad is going to yell at me, <laughs> but it wasn't until I like quit tennis that I was like, Oh wait, you don't have to torture yourself every day. And like, cause sports, they teach you like, don't feel your feelings. Like you're not nervous. You're not tired, yes. you numb. And that's what makes you a warrior. And then I realized like, wait, I can make money just with my natural personality. That would be dope. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have to wake up at fucking 5 AM. I literally told myself after college, I was like, I'm never running a time mile again. I'm never waking up at even 6 a.m. unless it's for a flight. And I started to have like boundaries with myself and listen to my own voice of like, what do what really brings me joy? And I tried the whole nine to five thing. I did like cold calling, I did marketing, I did like, like selling t-shirts for a while. And then I basically was like, I wanna do video. Cause I did some sports broadcasting. I knew how to edit. Yeah. And then like in two years, I was on a TV show. So like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I manifested this, but like, I didn't not manifest it. Smart I think guys me. are simple emotionally in the way that like, they either fucking love you or they don't. Where yeah. girls all fake fall in love with like tons of dudes. Like, I think he, I'm like immediately like, I'll see a guy at a bar. I'm like, he's the one. Yeah, we're yeah. like, we're, we're, and, that, and then I'll like fall out of it and fall out of love all the time. Make shit up in my brain about him. Where guys are like, they see red flags, I think, where girls don't. Like, I'll literally fall for any tall dude ever. Right. And occasional short kings. Are, like, they know when someone's good for them or not. Like, my fiance two weeks in was like, I'm marrying you. And I was like, this fucking narcissist. He's right. He's fucking playing games. And I'm like, I knew he was like all the other ones. And I was trying to play some games with him a little. And then at one point he was like, hey, if you want to play games, like, I actually, like, I'm out. Oh. And I, like, he, but in that way, he's being vulnerable. Of course. But it's and also, the, speaking of tennis, though, it's like, who's serving? kind of has the upper hand every once in a while mm -hmm. so it's like mm -hmm. oh oh i felt like i kind of had the ball in my court in yeah. this relationship and i think that happens in relationships where like somebody has a little more of the power 
at the moment and then like it kind of switches and then it goes back and forth it's it's constant i think people have to understand that relationships are a power struggle at times most of the time oh, it's for sure it's just people trying to be heard but it's a fight to get to that point well yeah they say after the initial puppy dog phase it's just like a boundary war oh, where yeah. you're each just just figuring out each other's boundaries and that's when most relationships end and once you can figure out like good boundaries or just like being good at fighting that's why it's like show who you are way in the beginning oh like, yeah if you're, if you're pretending to be like easy to get along with for six months you could date and last with literally anyone oh yeah but, but with him i went through some shit in my personal life in the beginning of our relationship and he saw sides of me that like he's i've never seen in myself and he was like, no, she, I, I like her, even though she keeps crying all the time. <laughs> I think I'm vulnerable and passionate, but like sometimes too much. Like I, I don't really have a filter. Well, yeah, because you're Puerto Rican. Yeah, that's true. And Italian. Yeah. So Are you I'm kidding a, me? I'm a nuclear fucking disaster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, all about expressing yourself. Yeah. Do not stay in a relationship that is just not working because you're just going to get older. You're going to get sadder. And you're going to get it fatter mm -hmm. and you're going to get angrier and you're going to mm -hmm. fucking learn to hate somebody that, and you're like, you know what? He has a good job. So I'll stay around here. People really need to understand that it's okay to be selfish. Oh, I love a breakup. I love a divorce. I love a breakup of an engagement. I live think your beautiful. life. Live, live your, your life. fucking life. Because if, you're the one that's left with that person who cares what other people think you're the yeah. one that has to spend every day with them and i do think that th yeah there's so many people to meet and just like settling is because you're afraid of being alone they say like the happiest people in the world are like in a happy relationship next is single people and the least happy people are people in unhappy relationships i think i saw that on tiktok yeah and then <laughs> tiktok's the new bible that's just what it yeah. is yeah. And, I, and that's why, like, I really just want people to stress that, like, people know my story. People know I was engaged before and that uh, I wasn't and I'm engaged again. Like, people know my life because I'm an idiot and put it on the Internet. But, like, <laughs> you know, so, like, I, I know I know what it's like. I, I'm not going to live my life for anybody else if I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just I, I can't do that. And your relationship, like they're a mirror to you and like their thoughts become your thoughts and like their conversation is what you're surrounding yourself with and your happiness is dependent upon the energy around you. So like it's sometimes you just need to get out of it. Do you still have performance anxiety when you perform? Great question. So the first time I did stand up was at Caroline's in front of 300 people. I did 10 minutes. Love it. It's like a podcast show. My friend was like, do 10 minutes of stand up up top. And I remember before I went on stage, I was like, this could be my tennis. Like I could walk on stage and freeze, be all in my head, be like worried about everything. But I got on stage and I felt like I was just like talking to a friend at brunch. And I think I just realized in that moment, like I, tennis was something that like I love to do, but I actually didn't love competing. And my, I always felt like I was crazy. I was fucked up, but it was actually just my body telling me like, you don't like this anymore. It and was, you were like kind of doing it for other people kind of. Oh my God. I had so much pressure from like coaches. My parents put so much money into my tennis that they didn't always have. Right. Like for a 14 year old, like I was sent to Florida. Like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders with it. So I think with, with stand up, not only am I the only one who's involved in my stand up, but when I get off the stage, I don't win or lose. And I have, Cause I am like greener in the industry. I don't have it attached to my ego where right. I'm like, I'm this comedian. I'm like, I go on stage. I try my best. I walk off and I'm proud of myself. And that's all I wanted for my tennis that I didn't have. Mm. So for stand up, it's become this like just There's fun, no creative expression for me. Yeah. And also like, I don't have feet. I don't have that much fear and I'm not holding it too close to my ego. So I actually like don't, really get nervous 